Hiya folks. Uh, just a little bit of an investigation video, this one. We've got this uh, Vauxhall Mocker, which has got a fault code on it for the uh, the rear wheel speed sensor. So I'll let Gary jack the car up in the air, and then we'll have a look at the sensor speed, find out where the sensor's located, and uh, hopefully find out the problem. Right, we'll see you in a minute. Right, so we're just gonna whack the um, wheel nuts off there. And we've got a, a thingy one on there, a locking wheel nut. Yeah. Most modern cars have got these fitted, folks. Don't go whizzing one of them off with a, an impact gun. We like to do it with a breaker bar, first of all. Oh, you've been watching my video. Hey? That's my advice. Unbelievable. Looks like he's had new discs on that, doesn't it? Right, just get it up in the air. Have you got an actual stand? No, I'm just getting one now. Let's have a look where he's jacked it up on. Yeah, just on the rear beam, I don't know if you can see that. It's up in the air now, so we're just going to get an axle stand. So don't worry, this ain't all gravel here, folks. Although this is a gravel covered area, it is actually concrete underneath there. So we're just going to whack that underneath. Find somewhere secure to put that. Because some cars have got very poor um, places where you can actually put a, an axle stand. So you have to be very careful. You ain't under enough, are you? So he's gonna go try and come more near with the this yeah, side. Can you just... What? Kind of what? Right, right, so he's just gonna go on the rear beam there. Do you want to take it up a little bit or down or? Just wants to come down a tad. Right, hold on, wait there. Got a, a normal, that's a normal Halfords axle stand folks. That was a bit too short. So just come underneath here, look. So we've got it on the uh, the rear beam there, as you can see, and it's one of our longer axle stands. So we're going to leave the uh, jack underneath it as well, but uh, that's given us enough clearance now. So if you're going to jack it up on where we've jacked it up, you might need the uh, tall ha taller axle stands, which we've got here. Right, so he's already loosened the wheel nuts. So we're just going to whip them off. All right, there we go. Let's have a little look what we've got here. Yeah, it looks like it's had new discs on it pretty recently, look. That was about two years ago. Yeah, just like to check the pads and all pads, plenty of meat on the pads there. So, this cable here, I would presume, is the speed sensor, and it looks like it's held on by a little Allen key. So it's saying this is open circuit, so I don't know if there's a connector there, is it? I think it's just in that arch, so I might have to take that Yeah, off. probably got to take this liner out there, so we can see the actual connector, so we can disconnect that cable then, and hopefully, Test the sensor to see if it's saying it's an open circuit. It's saying, yeah, it's open circuit. I think it's saying it's open circuit, so it might be just a dirty connector. We'll see what we can do with that anyway. So, we're, we're just going to take the inner liner panel off now and uh, we'll come back to you, right? So, a bit of background information here. Apparently, Garage has mentioned that, that it's been to a garage for this, and he said that this has been to um, a garage to have a new ABS sensor fitted. But uh, looking at these, they look like the original clips there from the uh. The manufacturer maybe so whether or not that has been in or out i'm not too sure or maybe they, they might have cleaned it or whatever i don't know but um if we take this allen key out there we can obviously withdraw the sensor and then take a look at it for the moment but gary's going to just take off these um little cover clips there so we can get this in the lining out and uh see what's happening in behind that you'll be able to tell from that whether or not it has been out before so that's just a 10 mil bolt in there holding that in and there looks like some um are they little allen keys then i think so that's crapping them it's these ones there yeah they're probably little allen keys on the star actually. star are they star keys you got that there 20. t20s so we'll just get them out as well but as i say if they have replaced that cable like the garage like they was told we'd see that up behind here Yeah, you can see that one's not been out there, folks. Look. So we'll see. Right, well, obviously, this hasn't been out for a while because that is seized in there, that one. So we've got that little clip out there. Now, I don't know if you can just see in there, Pete. We'll pull it back a bit more. Here's the actual sensor there, and that don't look like to me that that's been out at all. But uh, we should hopefully hey, pull that forward. And I'm just looking at that connector there, look. Has that had a bit of... Repair work done on that, look. That's not factory, is it? That's heat shrink, isn't that's it? That's heat shrink on there. Someone's been in here before, look. I'd say that's probably, the sensor probably hasn't been changed. They've noticed probably a break in the cable there by the looks of it, look. And it, I'd say they've repaired the cable as opposed to the sensor, because that definitely doesn't look like that's been out at all. That ain't, no. If you look at all that there, that looks like original. So that's what they've done there. They've, uh, they've, they've done a little repair job on this cable here. 
So that could be where the problem lies maybe, or maybe in here. So if we separate this sensor, we're pushing that in there. In fact, I can see bare cables there, look. Can you? Look. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can see that, people, well, look. There's actually bare cables there. It looks like it's been rubbing, which means it could be shorted down the chassis or something. So I'd be inclined now to just put this on and see whether or not, now we've pulled this away from its mounting, whether or not that that's um, cleared the fault because it's away from the mounting now. So let's try that first. We'll plug the meter in and have a look. But there's definitely two bare cables there which could be tracking down. Right, so I've got this um, auto fix diagnostic tool, people. You've got the uh, top done one I'll give you, didn't I? Yeah, I've but left it in the van. Left it in the van, so uh, that's why we're using this one. This one's got a remote um, connector to it, and it's just like a little, like a little iPad sort of thing. Look, that's all it is. So if we put that to one side, so I'm just going to plug that in. And under here, you've got the um, OBD2 port there. So if I just plug that in there, right, that's in. And if I turn the unit on. You normally need the ignition turned on for these, so I'm going to turn the ignition on anyway. Right, okay. And uh, we'll see if it still comes up with a fault. Right, so let's just have a look at uh, diagnostics. Right, so it's got some historical faults here as well as the uh, stuff which we've already got here. The fault history status, since the fault code was passed and failed, and it's saying it left rear wheel speed sensor circuit signal erratic, which could mean that it's getting wet and drying out or something like that left rear wheel speed sensor circuit low signal amplitude and then it said the same sensor here low voltage open circuit so it seems to have a few issues so maybe we can do now is to clear these and see if it comes back now we've got it separated right so it's saying we've cleared them codes on that so it's saying now that it's only got one fault there it's got a few other faults. You've got a headlight fault, we've got HVAC fault, a radio fault. Those are the actual faults on the vehicle. So if we go back into this one again now and read the trouble codes again, since we've reset them, it's still saying it's got a low voltage or an open circuit. So there is still a, a problem with that sensor. So if we disconnect it now and uh, try and manually check it, we probably, hopefully, will find that there is an issue maybe with that cable or we'll see that that cable is open circuit somewhere. So we're just going to add sensor now and see if we can sort of get this problem isolated. Right, so we've just cut that dodgy looking joint out here, people. So um, I'm just going to make sure that this joint is okay by pressing the meter in there. I've cleared them ends out there, just twist them together to short them out like that. So if I stick these in here now, I should get a short. Which we are getting a dead short there, as you can see. So that seems to be that that's okay. Right, so we've got rid of this bit of cable now. That's the older uh, dodgy looking cable, which uh, could have been an issue. So we've just got some uh, solid crimp lugs in there and we've connected up some new cable there to give us our length back. And uh, we're just gonna connect up the other end to this bit here. And uh, we're gonna just close these little bits of connector up a little bit in there, because they, they, they might have a bit of um, play in them. And that's what I think possibly could be the issue. So we're just gonna get this in now, and then we'll just tape all this up to make sure we don't get any water ingress in there. And uh, we'll see how, how, if that's cured the problem. Right, okay, so we've um, put the wheels back on now. And these are the two sensors there, as you can see. So the right rear wheel speed sensor is actually recording, as you can see there. And the left rear sensor is still doing nothing. So there is an issue with possibly the sensor, or it still could be open circuited from that connector block thing. So um, yes, there still is an issue. So there you go. We've uh, got rid of that possible fault on the cable and then bare wires there could have been the problem. We had to eliminate that first, obviously, but. Um, when we plugged the diagnostic unit in and started driving along, although we had a resistance on that um, wheel sensor, it was showing nothing coming back to the computer. And uh, we proved that by looking at the diagnostics, while the live data when we was actually driving the car along. So we're gonna tell the owner now to buy a new sensor, then we'll fit that. And uh, if there still is an issue, then somewhere down the line, it's an open circuit. Where we've actually replaced that cable now was the most logical place for being a broken cable 
the rest of it throughout the loom could be a devil's own job but let's hope it's not that so all we can do now as i say is change the sensor and uh, we'll just replace that should be just a simple plug in and plug out job now take the wheel off and do that anyway we'll probably come back to that and uh, we'll bring you along for the journey but that was our diagnostics we're using one of these little scan tools and that's where you need stuff like the live data it wouldn't pick up nothing obviously standing still you have to get the things rotating the wheel sensors rotating to show that they're not generating any readings whatsoever and that's what we found by using this as a live diagnostic tool right okay so it's now three or four days later and gary had to actually order the part from our local motor factors so what have we actually got here abs sensor 3703 that's including the vat 37 pounds 03 including the vat there you go so that's the sort of price i would imagine you can get them cheaper folks but um buy them off ebay eh you can't get them cheaper but you're waiting and you don't know the quality of the part yeah so this, this one an apex Decent brand there. there you go so that's it there so let's just take it out of the box and have a look at it first of all this box was sealed as well and it still is sealed by the way so we know it's not been tampered with so there you go folks that's the actual sensor there and we've got a brand new connector on the end there as you can see and that should hopefully just push in so if you want to see that actually fitted Gary's going to actually fit this now to the mocker pop over to the uh, project man channel and I will leave a link when it's available in the description just below this video so you can see the completion of this but once he's fitted that we'll then plug our diagnostic meter in which i'll show you and then we'll test it and see if that's cured the problem so i'll see you after he's fitted that right we fitted the new wheel cylinder we've taken the car for a drive and it's still not registering so what we did as a result of that was bring the car back we had a check of the connections the new connections we've ensured that we've got continuity from where we've made our, our top connector right the way down to the um, bottom of the old connector which is absolutely fine so we've proved that on both of the cables we've taken the speed sensor out again we've looked down the hole with a boroscope inside because that's where we thought there might have been it might not have been picking up the signal and uh, we've cleaned in there as well that's not done the job so we then took the other wheel off then we got the meters out and checked the voltages and various things continuity at that other wheel which is exactly the same as this wheel and uh, we're just about to get inside the car now and put it to the test again now a couple of things we've noted is that this vehicle apparently as looks like it's had a different ecu uh, fitted to it at some stage because there's parts of the engine management system which hasn't been rewritten to the new ecu um, that could be uh, an, an issue I don't think it might be the issue with this because I think this is just the part that you just change and it should work okay failing that it looks like we've got to then decide whether the cables from the top connector behind the uh, dirt shield there where that goes in the car and that goes to what you call a VCU all the four wheel cylinder circuits go to that VCU and then that means we've got to check continuity between the top of the connector and the VEC, uh, sorry, the VCU unit. But that obviously means a lot more work stripping down the car. So basically what we've done is what a garage would do. We found that the, the, we've taken the fault code, we've replaced the, um, the part which the fault code is saying is, is work, not working. We've put that in with a known good one. We've then done the, the car test and it showed it's still not working. We've then thought, well, maybe it might not have been the sensor. It could have been the, the pickup on in the wheel, which is a sealed unit in here, by the way. You can't actually take the wheel cylinder off and see anything. But that's where we got the boroscope inside and had the look. And then we took the one off the other side and looked inside that. And that was exactly the same. We did spray some cleaner in there and put some uh, scraped uh, inside there with a, a, a metal implement to in case there was anything blocking up the little channels or whatever so we're now just going to take a test ride now to see if it's the same i think it's going to be the same the next stage i think it's going to be the ec uh, the vcu to the wheel spindles checking them cables to see if they're broken but let's have a go now right here we go then i don't know if you can see that or not so gary's just about to start the car up now the abs light is still on now the right rear, rear, rear speed sensor should start moving which it is but the left one as you can see is not moving at all still that it's not picking up any voltage at all from the rear adapter ring at the back at all but we've cleaned that we've taken it off we've checked all the continuity from the cable and don't forget we've also put a new sensor in as well but it's not reading anything whatsoever 
So there we go, we've still got the issue. The ABS light is still on the dashboard over there. So we've got to inform the owner now that what we've done and what we've found, and we can rule out, as I say, a break in the cable in the wheel arch area, because we've checked all the continuity from the top connector right the way down to the uh, new sensor, and the continuity on both cables is okay there. So the next stage is informing the owner from the top of the connector in the wheel arch to the VCU, but that means stripping loads of stuff out, and we don't know the location of that anyway. So there we go, the problem's still there. We may update you if the, if the owner decides to carry on or uh, find out, but he might decide to sell the car, who knows? So it's a tie up to the owner. So we'll come back to you on this one. It just goes to show that just changing these sensors and reading these codes doesn't always solve the problem, people. So uh, just something to be aware of, that you have to look a bit further sometimes, and uh, even then, it's not up to you to make the decision. If you're doing it for a customer, it's up to them to make the decision whether to invest in your time to look for these uh, external problems. It's a few days later now, folks, and I've been having a little think about this fault with a mocker, and as it went in for repair, and they said they changed the sensor, which obviously they didn't do, and they come out, I asked if that cured the problem, and they said that the light was still on. So they obviously didn't fix the problem, and that's how it was left. So they did that repair which I showed you, and I'm thinking that maybe the cables, when they put the cut the cable and rejoin it up, maybe they've got the cables turned the wrong way, hence there's no signal being read at all. So what I said to Gary was, get the car back, we'll have a look, we'll change the terminations round and see if that sorts the problem out. If it does, all well and good. Failing that, the only other thing that we can find or, or check out is we don't know whether it's the reluctor ring or whatever it is in the actual wheel hub, because it's a sealed unit, whether that's not sending a signal out, the magnet's not reading it because it might be corrupt or dirty or broken, or it could be a fault with the wiring loom going back to the VCU as I mentioned before. So what we could do if that doesn't work changing the terminations round is disconnect the sensor to the other side loom and then we could determine whether or not that the reluctor ring is a problem using the other side's good loom then obviously we can prove that the uh, the loom's all right or if it does transfer over we can check whether or not the sensors the the reluctor ring is broken so either way we'll be able to tell if it's the loom or the actual wheel hub itself with the sealed unit so let's get this sensor out, get them cables turned around first and see if that does anything. Right, okay, so behind here, the old that but, there's our cable which was jointed by the uh, garage, but we've just, we just changed like for like basically, you know. So what we're gonna do, these two cables here, we're gonna reverse, because when they done the, the original joint up there, we don't know whether or not they changed the colors around the wrong way, so, by us changing this cable around here, we can prove whether or not that is the case. So we're gonna cut these, reverse them, plug it back in, and then see what the meter says. So one's got a black line on, that's that one. So that wants to go to the other one. So Gary's just gonna strip that down first of all, connect it up, plug it back in, and then put the diagnostic reader on it and see if this starts to pick up a signal. That one, so black line to non-black line. Yep, twist them together. So that's non-black line. Right, okay, so we'll plug that into to take the, the handbrake off and all. sensor. You plug that in. Yeah. Handbrake off, ignition on, but I've got to go and get the meter first, so let's go and do that. Right, so it's just doing a scan now, folks, of the whole car. Tell you what faults come up. Right, so let's go to the brake module fault, which we know. Let's see if it's a ECU trouble codes. And it's saying this ignition cycle is fine. I'm going to erase the court fault first of all, and then it's resetting the court. Now I'm going to say read codes again. If it comes up again, then we still got the fault, I think. Yeah, it's still come up. Right, so we want the left hand rear speed sensor and the right hand rear speed sensor. And let's uh, show the selected. That's them two there. So now I'm going to turn this hub 
I'm not sure if we have to start the car up, so Gary's going to turn the other side. Yeah, that's turning, that's making a... Yeah. Yeah, so that one's working. But this one, still nothing, folks, look. So that wasn't the issue. So we've got to go to the next stage of investigation now. This one, we're going to connect up to the loom on the other side and see if this transfers the fault over. If it does transfer the fault over, that means there's a problem with the hub in here somewhere where that sensor goes, it's not reading properly. We're gonna get some cable now, we're gonna try that first. So we'll see you in a minute. Right, okay, so what we've done, let me just show you. We've got the sensor from this side down here. This is the brand new sensor which we put in. That's connected up to a pair of cables, which goes across the rear of the car to the other side and I've connected it into the wiring loom to the right hand side rear sensor so yeah if the fault is transferred over to the right hand side this right hand this left hand hub now is being fed off the right hand side loom so by looking at the meter I'm going to turn the wheels and see what happens right so the this now comes up on the right hand loom so if this if we turn this and the right rear rear speed sensor comes up with a reading the right one is being operated off of this drum here now that would mean that the reluctor ring inside here is fine so let's have a go which it is there you go so we've just proved that this wheel hub this this sensor is now working absolutely fine so the problem lies with these cables where they go in the loom somewhere to the VCR, which makes life a hell of a lot harder. Right, okay, so this is reading an open circuit. So what I've done, I've just shorted this out, the sensor cable, and I'm gonna erase the codes on the reader. And if this cable is going where it should be and there's no problem, it should say short circuit. So let's read, if it says open circuit, there's a break in the cable somewhere. There you go, it's still saying left speed symbol, low open, uh, low voltage open circuit. So somewhere between here and where it goes to, I think it's a VCI or VCU, one of the two. That's where we're at at the moment, folks. So we've now concluded that the sensor's okay here. We've now concluded that the hub's okay because we've converted this cable over to the next hub and it's not coming up and it's working fine on the other side. So that's where we are with this, folks. I don't know how this is going to pan out now. We've got to go and tell the owner what the problem is, whether they want to investigate it further. But uh, I thought we'd just bring you along for this little bit of diagnosis just to show our train of thought to cut out certain things rather than leave it to guesswork thinking, well, it might be the hub or it might be the loom. We've now concluded that the hub's okay, the new sensor's okay, but the problem lies with that little test done with the loom going back into the car somewhere, into the main loom. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here this time. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've got something out of this video. Don't forget to check out my other videos. There's loads of playlists there for repair stuff and uh, uh, lawnmower stuff, restoration stuff and all that. You might be interested in something there. Have a little binge watch. Thanks very much. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.